Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror episode, Masters of Horror, Pelts. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the police investigating a brutal crime scene, filled with blood and dead bodies of people who suffered horrific deaths. The crime scene photographer takes pictures of everything, and with each bright flash, more details about the deaths are revealed in their terrifying glory. Jake, a fur trader, is not having a good day. His company is not doing well, and the recent batch of processed furs were substandard. He yells at his employees for not doing better. He's now under high pressure to keep the business afloat and find higher quality pelts, and he leaves the office in a blind rage. To blow off steam, he goes to his favorite strip club in town. He's a regular there, but tonight, he only has eyes for one particular stripper. Jake pays for a private lap dance, and the bouncer ushers him inside a hallway. He enters a dark room with just a red chair inside, and no sign of his favorite stripper yet. Through the darkness, the enchanting stripper makes her way to him, while hurling insults. He likes it when she mocks him, and is mean to him. While she gyrates, Jake promises her that his fur business will take off soon, and he will be a rich man. He obviously desires her, but he can't touch her or any of the other strippers, or get anything more than a lap dance. The stripper shimmies closer to him. Jake can't control himself, and suddenly presses her up against the wall, to take her without her consent. The stripper fights him off with several jabs to his torso. She manages to free herself from his muscles, and she puts the chair between them as protection. Undeterred, Jake vows that she will sleep with him soon. He then leaves the scared stripper alone in the room. That same night, a trapper and his son venture into a piece of private land deep within the woods. The land is owned by a scary old woman, and for generations, horrifying stories about monsters and other creatures haunt the property. All the other locals living nearby avoid the property as much as they can, because the stories say that inside the old woman's property are the ruins of an ancient city. But the trapper is desperate to capture animals he can sell. Yesterday he snuck into the property and laid some traps. Tonight, he and his son snuck back again, to see if they caught anything. It turns out their traps have captured a bunch of raccoons. The trapper now schools his innocent son, on how to kill the captured raccoons by squeezing their windpipes. If any of the animals escape, they can use the baseball bat to whack them in the head. While the trapper proceeds to skin the animals, his son notices the murals of raccoons on the worn walls of the ruins. They also discover that one of the raccoons had escaped the trap, by chewing its own leg off. Gathering all the dead raccoons, they sneak out of the private property to avoid being seen by the old woman, who lives in a cottage there. That night, the trapper celebrates their success by popping open a beer bottle. He remarks on how unblemished and beautiful the raccoon pelts are, excited at the prospect of selling them at high price. However, the son confesses that he has a weird feeling about what they did. The trapper chalks it up to nerves, and leaves his son to process the pelts, while he goes upstairs to sleep. On the other side, Jake goes back to the strip club, so he can watch the same stripper he harassed before. She is now dancing on stage, and undressing her white fur coat and bikini. While intently staring at the stripper, he receives a call from the trapper, who has been supplying him with low-quality pelts in the past. But the trapper insists that the pelts he is now are so beautiful, and Jake will have everything he wants. Obviously, Jake's thoughts go to the stripper, and he begins to believe that if he gets rich from the pelts, he will be able to sway the stripper one way or another to sleep with him. Left downstairs, the trapper's son gets mesmerized by the silken texture of the pelts he's hanging to dry. A strange urge overtakes him, and he grabs the baseball bat, and goes up to his father's room. He wakes up the trapper, who's lying in bed. Just like his father had instructed him, the son whacks him in the head with the bat. His head immediately gets crushed like a mashed potato, and blood sprays the bedroom walls. The next morning Jake and his male assistant arrive at the trapper's house, to look at the raccoon pelts he promised. They check downstairs first, and are greeted by the sight of majestic pelts drying. But they also discover the dead body of the trapper upstairs, still lying on the bed with flies swarming the carcass. It turns out, after his son bludgeoned him to death with the baseball bat last night, he went downstairs to look at the mesmerizing pelts one last time. Then, he dived face first into one of the steel traps they used on the raccoons, and killed himself. Jake and his assistant are appalled by the horrifying corpses they saw inside. The two race outside to quell their nausea. Then Jake starts thinking. The pelts inside the house are so beautiful that he is sure they will become the talk of the town, when they debut it at the upcoming International Fur Trade Show. This is the way for his company to have a big break. So Jake convinces his assistant that they should just get the pelts, and then they will just contact the police anonymously to report the deaths of the trapper and his son. 
they spring into action, and grab the pelts. The two get into the car, and hightail it out of there. They bring the pelts to their office, and show them to the female Asian employees, who also get a weird feeling upon seeing the pelts. The next thing Jake needs is a model, to show off the fabulous coat they'll be making from the pelts. So he goes to the stripper at the club, who reiterates that she will never sleep with him. But he convinces her that this gig is just a business transaction, and a chance for her to be a model. Since the stripper had failed dreams of becoming a model, she gets tempted to accept. He then informs her that the coat will be done by next week, and he will bring it to her place. Sultrally, she tells Jake that she knows what he likes, and she's still undecided on whether or not she'll accept his offer. Jake's employees get to work on making the pelts into the fabulous coat that he promised the stripper. He gets mad at the trimmer for messing up the cutting of the fur. Reprimanding the trimmer, Jake threatens him that he will cut off his balls if he makes a mistake again. That night the trimmer gets the same urge as the trapper's son did. With a glazed look in his eyes, he pulls out the silver scissors he uses when working, then cuts off his nipple. He then cuts his chest wide open with the scissors, and his bowels spill out of his body. The next day, Jake's assistant brings up the idea of finding a steady supply of the same beautiful raccoon pelts. Having that supply would take their business to the next level, and Jake rushes to the trapper's house, to look for clues on where he got the raccoons. He arrives at the house, and rifles through the trapper's drawers and things. After a few minutes, Jake finds a map to the old woman's land tacked on the wall. That same night, Jake heads to the forest indicated on the map. He ventures inside the fence barricading the land from the rest of the forest, and sees the same ancient ruins where the trapper and his son found the raccoons. He discovers the old woman's cottage, and introduces himself to her. The old woman mysteriously says that she has been expecting him, so she lets him in. Inside the cottage, Jake asks her about the raccoons. She tells him a story about the lost city nearby. The family of raccoons have been the guardians of the ruins for centuries, and she has been warning the locals to stay off the land, because the raccoons have otherworldly powers. Now that the trapper has killed the raccoons, a curse is being meted out to him and anyone who uses the raccoons for profit. Consequently, all the cursed people are dying from the same gruesome methods that trappers and furriers use to get the pelts from animals. Jake laughs at her story and dismisses it as a mere myth. He then offers her money in exchange for him getting a couple of raccoons for breeding so he can have access to a steady supply of beautiful pelts. But the old woman flies into a rage and shouts at him for disrespecting the raccoons. She chases him out of the cottage, speaking in a foreign language. Out of his earshot, the old woman whispers that the curse is not done with Jake, and the worst is yet to come. Jake drives back to the city, and heads to the office. There, he finds the dead body of his Asian seamstress on the floor. His assistant recounts the story, saying that the seamstress stayed up late last night to finish the coat. Then, inexplicably, she started to sew her nose and mouth shut, and she eventually suffocated to death. But this doesn't matter to Jake at all. What's important is that the coat is finally finished, and it's even more beautiful than he imagined it would be. He gleefully grabs it, and takes it to the stripper's apartment. The stripper is reluctant to open the door to him. But once she sees the fur coat through the peephole, she is entranced by it. She opens the door, and Jake comes in. She couldn't resist running her hands all over the splendid coat, and trying it on. She even tells Jake that she doesn't care about modeling it at the fur trade show, she only wants to have the coat, Jake sees his opening, and insinuates that if she proves to him that she is worth it, he won't consider other models for the gig, and she can have the coat too. The stripper understands the transaction he is offering, so she gets on her bed to seduce Jake. The two sleep together, while she is wearing the fur coat. Afterward, Jake goes to her bathroom to freshen up. Inside, he gets possessed by the curse, and he grabs a knife from her sink. He then proceeds to cut the skin of his torso off, and make a vest out of it. Jake screams in pain, as he gingerly peels off the human skin vest. Back in her bedroom, the stripper is too consumed by the fur coat to hear what Jake is doing. She giggles, and says that sleeping with a detestable man like Jake, is extremely worth it if it means she gets the fur coat. Dazed and in pain, Jake stumbles out of her bathroom, and holds up the human skin vest. He proudly tells the stripper that this is his masterpiece, and he did it for her. Understandably, the stripper is horrified by what she saw, and she runs screaming out of her apartment. Jake chases after her, still possessed by the curse. The stripper gets into the elevator as it's going down. Jake lifts the door up, and jumps through the shaft and into the elevator. She tries to escape, but Jake grabs her leg. She tries to crawl away from him, by holding onto the closing elevator doors. But her hand gets crushed and cut off. Blood sprays all over her. Later the assistant arrives at the apartment building, 
and sees the police investigating the same bloody crime scene shown earlier in the film. Jake is dead on the elevator floor, with his human skin vest lying beside him. The stripper succumbed to her injuries, and is also dead, with her cut-off hand strewn outside the elevator. The movie ends with the assistant taking it all in shock, and muttering that the dead man is his friend. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.